Great. All right. So thank you all so much for coming here. This is going to be a little brief webinar uh, concerning how wireless quizzes can help you overcome some of the challenges posed by uh, well, the necessity to do remote assessment, but not only that, uh, just in general, how wireless quizzes can help your STEM assessment tools in Canvas become uh, bigger and better and just more everything, really. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Just one second while I do that. Okay. John, are you seeing my screen correctly? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, perfect. So like I said, the, the main focus of, of what we'll talk about today is how to how wireless quizzes can help us overcome the transition uh, to remote assessment. Now we, we say the transition to remote assessment because obviously we think that, well, we don't think, it is a fact that now there's a necessity to do remote assessment. And, and so wireless quizzes is a tool that can help a lot, particularly when it comes to STEM uh, type of assessments. However, not only for remote assessment, also for assessment in the classroom, people have already been using wireless quizzes for, for some time now. And, and it helps in, in all senses, not just for remote, but of course uh, it's going to be particular, particularly important to, to talk about what we can do for remote assessment at this time. Um, so yeah, so just briefly, what we're going to look at uh, summarized is, well, first we'll talk about what some of the challenges with STEM assessment can be uh, in general, not even related to, to wireless quizzes. Uh, then how wireless quizzes uh, sort of in, in a summary form can, all, can be a solution towards those problems. And then we'll go into more particular details of how wireless quizzes work and, and even see an example of that. And finally, I would encourage you all to stick around until the very end because uh, we will be offering some uh, something for you to, uh, well, you'll see what it is. It's a little surprise for the end. So yeah, without further ado, with, and also, sorry, before I'm missing here a little section, before uh, we close out, obviously we're going to have a little space for questions. I think the, the whole, the body of this, uh, the whole presentation will be about 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll have five to 10 minutes for questions. So we'll take all of those questions at the end. Of course, you can feel free to go to write the questions as I'm talking, and then we'll come back to them. All right, so I'd like to begin just with a, a little story of a student who, who goes to answer a question, a math question on a quiz, and decides that he doesn't want he or she doesn't want to use letters or Greek symbols. They prefer dogs, uh, squirrels, trees, uh, you know, acorns, all sorts of things, which is mathematically speaking, perfectly fine. Um, you know, you know that a, a variable is just a symbol that denotes a certain quantity or function or whatever. And, and so in principle, there's, there's no problem with, with using animals or whatever you want as variables. And, and so of course, the solution to, for anyone who wants to check over the resolution to this uh, differential equation, it is perfectly correct. The answer is correct. Uh, although the teacher has expressed some amount of exasperation in their choice of, of sim symbols, um, they, they get received full marks because it's, it's perfectly correct. And that's sort of the, obviously with wireless quizzes, we can't do so much as to allow people to actually draw little animals for variables. Although if we have enough requests for that, that's of course something that we can look at implementing. Um, we want to allow students to be able to express their, their answers with as much flexibility as, as is possible. Uh, basically with as much flexibility as you could normally do just on a piece of paper. Uh, we don't want the, the fact that it's happening through digital means to represent any sort of limitation on how the student is, is able to express their answers uh, or, their, or how the teacher can express their feedback and so on. Uh, so we'll go into the details of how that works, but that's the, the general philosophy of how wireless quizzes is meant to, to help out. 
so yeah, just to uh, th to go back to that, the the main limitation there is, I guess, many limitations of being able to do STEM assessment um, on a digital platform on an online platform. However, the the main one is is the fact that well, you have to work with formulas uh, and all sorts of symbols, and that creates an issue because you don't have uh, platforms that can deal with those. And so you have to resort to multiple choice. Virus quizzes uh, has the goal of breaking the limitations of multiple choice, which are very many, pedagogically speaking, multiple choice is very, very far from the optimal way of, of assessing and ultimately assessing with the goal of being able to properly teach those subjects. And we will see very briefly how exactly we can, well, what those challenges are and what virus quizzes can do to help us overcome those challenges. So uh, in, a, in a few words, what we have are, I guess we could separate it into three different users in the whole process of having a, a online platform such as Canvas for, uh, for, for assessment and for everything that, that you need to do. They are teachers, students, and but not just teachers and students, also administrators of the platform, which are, you know, we need those, we need the administrators to help us make things run smoothly, run correctly and everything. And so we, we have to consider the three types of users that we have in the whole online ecosystem and their different needs. They all have different needs when it comes to providing a good assessment tool. Uh, and all of them are important, uh, not just the, the teachers or not just the students, um, particularly with, with remote assessment. So teachers, their needs, oh, well, in case it's not clear, we have the, the teacher over there on the left, um, you know, not, not to say that that should be any uh, <laughs> particularly representative uh, figure of a teacher, but I think it's clear that we have a teacher on the left in the middle of students and then the uh, IT admin or LMS admin, however you want to call it. Um, so the teachers have to be able to create STEM assessments that are, I, I guess, complex or engaging things that stimulate the, the brain of, of students taking that test uh, because ultimately they're being assessed on their ability to, uh, well, we want to assess them on their ability to think creatively, to solve problems uh, in a complex way and not just rote memorization. So the teacher has to be able to create that type of assessment, uh, which obviously necessitates having diverse questions. Um, we know, you know, if, if you are a teacher right now and you're watching this meeting, I know that you know that none of your students would ever cheat, uh, but just in case uh, it is good to be able to reduce it in, in the case that someone would be tempted to cheat on an exam. Uh, it helps to have methods to, to be able to prevent that. And, and then finally, once the assessment is done, we have to be able to give students feedback on what they've done. Otherwise, it's not really good for anything, is it? So, so those are, I mean, we could go on, but you know, main points of, of how a teacher uh, should be able to create STEM assessments on an online platform. Uh, then students sort of, on the complementary side, they need to be able to understand a mistake that they've made. So that's where the feedback comes in. Uh, they need to be able to practice the type of exercises that we want them to learn. And increasingly, uh, they need to be able to work on mobile devices. Uh, th this is, you know, at this point, the reality that we cannot ignore that the simple fact that yeah, that increasingly people are working more and more, maybe maybe not with uh, phones so much, but even anything with the touch screen, uh, tablets and so on. And for the, on the administration side of things, what we want to be able to do is to have an easy way to integrate a new tool. Uh, we want to be able to provide users with adequate training on using those tools. Uh, and ultimately increase because, you know, it's a whole effort and, well, a initial and sustained effort to maintain and provide these online tools. So you want the people that you're doing the effort for to actually use them 
and they need to be equipped to be able to use them. And so, and those things are in the interest, obviously, of the administrators of these platforms. Um, so those are, in summary, the issues that we identify or the, some of the challenges, the main ones, with providing a good way of uh, STEM assessment on online platforms. I guess we could say it, these are challenges that any type of assessment faces, but uh, particularly when it comes to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, it is, uh, there are some things that are more tricky than others. And then the, oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come to the questions uh, afterwards, sorry. Do you want to say something? Yeah, Presley. Uh, I think you're muted. Presley has the hand up, so maybe he, he has a uh, question that he wants to know. Uh, sure. sure. If, if we yeah. can, if you can stick, stick around, around until the end, end. we'll do the, the questions, questions later. Because she so has to ask because she didn't put it on the chat. So maybe she, she has, has something, something to do to ask. Okay, we can take the question right now. That's no problem. Uh, just one okay. second. Uh, how much is, is randomization, randomization possible in a question? Uh, uh, well, that's a very good question. Random. Randomization is exactly, exactly one of the features that we'll get to later. later. And, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about randomization when it comes to wireless business features. And, and you'll see that it's very much possible to be able to randomize questions. Uh, and that's sort of what the, the point of having a diverse question bank uh, addresses. So, so moving on, on the other side of this, we have the challenges and on the one hand, and on the other hand, how wireless, oh, not on the presentation, how wireless quizzes, uh, well, what we propose is the way that wireless quizzes can solve those challenges. So on the teaching side, we have very importantly, the ability to actually make open questions, or at least that's that's something that any uh, assessment ideally should be is a, a, an open question where the student just writes their answer, uh, not limited to any set of answers or, or multiple choice or anything like that. And, and then we can have the, hopefully, I mean, the, the, the issue with, with open questions is that you might have to grade them manually. What wireless quizzes actually, as we'll see later, allows you to do is have that automatically graded, even though it is a, an open question. The obviously grading, the more uh, efficient of a process it can be, the, the better for, for everyone, because then you have time to, well, you don't have to spend as much time grading. And obviously we know that that leads to being able to dedicate more time to things that perhaps uh, grading is important, but you don't have, that's not letting you, for example, think of a, you know, how you want to teach students content, uh, design classes, et cetera. Uh, so having time for reducing the time that that takes is important. Uh, the, well, this is not a, a solution per se, but uh, it is important to note that wireless quizzes is actually interesting to anyone from at any level of, of education. So from K through 12, all the way up until higher education, uh, that is, there is always going to be a way that wireless quizzes can help in, in the process of STEM. Maybe STEM isn't the appropriate term when we're talking about K through six, uh, but you know, math, science, uh, there's, there's always things that an online platform such as Canvas or well, any LMS might be lacking when it comes to math and science that wireless quizzes can provide at, at any level of education. Uh, then at the higher levels, uh, the ability to, to create graphs starts to become important. Um, as we all remember from high school is when we had to buy graphing calculators. And, and so that's something that is not so easy. It's very easy to do on paper. You can just have a graphing paper and draw, but on an online platform, it becomes more of a challenge. So you need something to, to be able to do that. And, and the randomization comes in not, to not only to prevent cheating, because it's not the only use that it has, but that's one uh, very powerful way that wireless quizzes can 
uh, can deter students from from cheating because well if the questions are random and everybody has a different version of the question then obviously you, you can't really use other students answers to answer your own question uh, so you know that in parallel to uh, to the challenges that we saw before is how virus quizzes offers to solve those uh, problems, those issues. On the side of students, the, well, for open questions, the students can give open answers. Uh, well, we've already talked about that and how virus quizzes can allow you to just answer a question, not, not with uh, perhaps dogs and acorns, but, but in, in a flexible way, in the same way that you write any math expression on paper. Uh, so I, I'm seeing a raised, some raised hands. Uh, I think I think we have we'll we'll have time right at the end to to um, to answer those questions. So if you can stick around just until the end, then then we'll have a good amount of time to answer all the questions. So the, uh, where was I? Sorry, with, with random parameters, not only can you uh, prevent cheating, that's something that's interesting for the teachers. Um, well, well, like I said, we know that your students would never cheat. <laughs> uh, the random parameters not only are good for that, but they allow you to, for example, practice the same type of, of question over and over again with different sets of data and, and that allows you to, uh, to get better at a certain type of question. If you put some of the question data to be random, then you can keep practicing that type of question. And on the necessity of using mobile tools, which we saw in, in the last slide, or the increasing usage of mobile tools, um, what we have is actually the ability to handwrite uh, formulas. And well, not just formulas, but handwrite expressions, uh, which is, uh, we know, if you have to use a toolbar on a mobile device or a touch screen, you're, you're done with, <laughs> because there's a lot of buttons and, you know, already typing text on a mobile device, although we've all gotten good at it now, is prone to a lot of errors, especially so with a whole toolbar with math icons and, and so on. So the best way is to just be able to handwrite it and for that to get evaluated. Uh, and we'll see, we'll see exactly how that works in just a, a few moments. Then lastly, for the, the challenges that might be seen on the uh, administration side, uh, we, of course, we provide the, a very simple process for integration in Canvas, uh, other LMSs as well, although you know, the focus of this is going to be Canvas uh, right now. Uh, not just LMSs, but wireless quizzes can be integrated in any platform that you have through either LTI or directly with uh, our own API, uh, which is, of course comes with extensive documentation on how to integrate the, the tool. And then we actually provide a well, lot documentation on the usage side as well, but also training for users to be able to get up to speed in how the tools work. Um, uh, because well, obviously you have, you have a new tool and you need to, it's wireless quizzes has a lot to, to look at. And so we recognize the need for extensive documentation and training with those. So with that said, uh, let's look at a very quick example. How are we doing on time? Just to see how exactly, okay, we're good. So just to, to see a quick example of how wireless quizzes works, we're going to do a pop quiz. Uh, feel free to answer along with me in, on your own notes, and then you can check if, if we got the right results in the end. I will attempt to, uh, because some of the questions are randomized, uh, uh, I will have to come up with some of the answers on the fly. But the important thing, of course, is to look at how wireless quizzes works in action. So I've switched applications, can you, are we seeing the, um, okay, good. Just wanted to check that we're still seeing that. 
First question. Uh, okay, this is relatively simple. Calculate the addition. There's a typo there. Of calculate the sum of one half and one fourth. Simplify the answer. So I'm going to make a mistake here purposely, and instead of writing the simplified answer, I'm going to see what happens when I write six eighths, and that's going to be my answer. We can see I'm actually using a touch screen now. And I've handwritten the formula on the, well, on the touch interface, uh, but that is recognized as a typeset mathematical formula. And that's what's, you know, the fraction six eighths is what's actually will be submitted. Uh, if I'm a student here, I can actually write uh, optional reasoning for my answer, uh, which is that I forgot how to simplify, unfortunately. Um, well, this is going to be a little bit more challenging. The, the answer to this one will probably be something like uh, x plus one squared, oops, times x minus one. If anyone wants to, I'm not, I, I think I might have an issue with the signs here, but you know, it, it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, the point of this question is to, that we'll see that wire squares can actually tell uh, whether a polynomial is factorized or not. And of course, what we're seeing here is, you know, how, I, okay, I've written x plus one squared times x minus one. What if I had written the x minus one first and then times x plus one squared? Or if I wrote one plus x, the answer is all of those answers are accepted because why is because can interpret these as mathematical expressions. Uh, next, we have an example of how units can be used. So, if I, uh, well, given a rectangle of size two kilometers and 23 meters, calculate the area in square meters. Uh, that's going to be something like uh, 46,000 square meters. So now I write an M and you can see that, well, maybe it's a little bit difficult to see, but it is a different color. So it knows that that's a unit and it does compare all units uh, with equivalences. So if I wrote meters squared, or if I wrote, if I, you know, did a reduction by 10,000 or 100,000, however much, and wrote kilometers squared instead, then it would know that those two things are the same. So 46,000 meters squared or 0 0.046 kilometers squared. It knows that those two are the same things. The same with any SI units. So any equivalence of units that exist uh, within the SI system, such as, um, well, I don't know, with pressure, or if you, instead of using a pressure unit, you use uh, force divided by surface or whatever different type of equivalence, um, it can actually detect it and know that it's the same. Uh, in this case, it's meter squared, so we'll leave that there. Now here we have an example that at first glance just seems like another uh, fraction addition problem, but this is actually an example of a randomized question. So when we load the quiz again, we'll see that it's actually going to change the values that, that we see. Uh, now, in this case, I guess the answer would be uh, six. What is this? I have to multiply that, make it 20 it's That's going to be four plus uh, 25, so 29, 29 something like that. It's been a while since I've added fractions. It's also been a while since I've calculated uh, the integral of something. Let's see what the, the, the purpose of this question is just to see that, uh, well, wires quizzes can tell if you have integrated something correctly. So going back to, you know, we have on the one hand, uh, the question that asks you to add two fractions and simplify the results. And on the other hand, the question that asks you to calculate an integral of an expression and wires because this can actually well you know it's it's provide solutions for mathematics education at all levels uh, so if i'm not mistaken and it has been a while since i've done one of these uh i believe this should be just tan of of four um tan of four x maybe i'm gonna go out i'm just gonna i believe that should be the the, the integral of that. If somebody has the answer and they want to correct me, well, 
I won't, I won't be able to see it now, but you'll be able to know in your head that you beat me to it. Uh, so let's finish the attempt now and see how we did. Submit all and finish. Now this one I purposely answered with a non-simplified answer. And so we can see what happens there is that I actually get uh, 0 0.2 out of one. So it's not totally incorrect, but of course it's not simplified. So wireless quizzes, well, you can decide what to do with the grade in that case. Uh, if you want to provide zero marks or only partial credit for having the right answer, but not simplified, it's up to you what to do in each case. Uh, and simplified, you know, is, is I guess the, the easiest criteria to showcase, but we also have uh, factorized. Well, that's going to be the next one. Oh, look, I, I did it right. Okay, that's, I'm very happy that I was able, <laughs> able to do that. Um, uh, and here we have an example, for instance, of how the teacher, this is how they wrote the answer, x minus one times x plus one squared. And I wrote in a different order, x plus one squared times x minus one. And of course, wireless quizzes does interpret mathematics and it does know that those two things are the same, uh, along with a number of uh, different expressions. Uh, you know, any, any equivalent way that, that you can write anything will be corrected. In fact, uh, whenever we do one of these or whenever we uh, have a stand at conferences, we challenge people to come up with two equivalent expressions, you know, one just a normal expression and another one are extremely ridiculous way of writing the same thing and see if wireless quizzes uh, fails to see that they're the same. For now, we have not had anyone successfully uh, break wireless quizzes, so to speak, and be able to write something in such a weird way that it doesn't know that it's equivalent. Um, so that's a good challenge for anyone that, that wishes to do so. I'll provide a link to a demo later. Um, the next question, nothing really more to see here. We answered it correctly with the correct units. If I had not answered with units, then, then you can choose to give a different feedback here. Uh, so here, this is just the default feedback, but you can change the feedback to say, hey, you got the right answer, but you didn't use units. We all know that, that that's like the, our, our favorite thing to do is to call out people for not using units. Um, in fact, we can see an example of that, sorry, going back to the Simplified question. Now, this this uh, instructor was was not feeling very verbose the day that they wrote this uh, feedback. It says you had to simplify the answer, but you can imagine, you know, once you you come up with a feedback that you can decide to add when they do the correct answer, but it's not simplified, or when it is correct and it is simplified, or if there's some other criteria such as being factorized, you can use a different feedback. Uh, and lastly, okay. Oh, 10 to 4x plus 2, of course. Yeah, well, I, I, the answer was not right, um, but it's just an example of showing that wireless courses can go all the way up to higher education and teaching calculus concepts such as uh, integrals, obviously differentiation as well, um, and anything really that you might need in a higher education context. So, one last thing just on, on this short example is we'll want to see, oh, hang on one second, an example of how it's randomized. So the fractions before were, um, oh, sorry, were five, one fourth and five fourths or something like that. And now I've loaded the quiz again. And we see that since these two were randomized, they are now five sevenths and four ninths, for instance. Uh, they could have also been negative two thirds and uh, one, I don't know. So that's just a very simple example. I believe also the, the question with the, yeah, the question with the, with the integral is also randomized. So not only can you randomize simple numbers and fractions and stuff like that, you can also randomize complete uh, algebraic expressions you know, with trigonometric functions or, or whatever you have, uh, you can make the random work across any type of expression, really. Um, yeah, so that's that's the end of our brief example. Just to 
quickly summarize what we just saw. Hopefully, can you check that I'm that I've gone back to these slides? Okay, good. I, I have to check because sometimes it, even though I switch, it doesn't go back, and then I'm talking by myself over something that you aren't seeing, and it's it's a disaster. <laughs> um, so to summarize the uh, the features that we just saw with the, the quick example of virus quizzes in Canvas, um, which, which is actually a public demo that I'll provide uh, credentials for uh, so that you can all just play around. It's a sandbox that we provide for anyone to play around with and create questions in wires quizzes and do anything they want and, and just test it out. Uh, to summarize is, of course, on the one hand, the ability to recognize uh, mathematical expressions, uh, not only on the simple level, but also um, even all the way up to, you know, equivalences between trigonometric functions. Like I said, we, we have always challenged people to come up with two expressions that are equivalent that wires quizzes doesn't know um, are equivalent. And, and we've, we've not gotten any successes yet. So maybe someday will be the day, but not, not yet. Um, then also the ability to add criteria. We've we've seen the criteria being simplified, but you know you can also ask for it to be factorized, uh, rationalized uh, in lowest terms, etc. Uh, there's a number of criteria that you can ask for the for the question. Uh, lastly, the ability to lastly but not least, of course the ability to randomize the question so that you can have little parts of the question data be randomized. And of course, the answers corresponding to those, uh, to each random uh, version of the question. And one thing that we did not see in this uh, version, in this, uh, sorry, in this example, uh, because it's sort of a new feature that's not yet on the, on the public demo, but it's something that we have gotten a lot of requests for, and we finally implemented it. It's, it's a new feature that's well, it's already out. Um, the ability to actually answer questions on a graph. So one type of question is, are those where you answer something with, a, with an algebraic expression or, or a number or, uh, and so on. But then there's also a wide variety of questions that are not any of those. And we actually want the student to produce a, a graphical representation of something, uh, you know, a graph of a function or a bar graph or what have you type of, of graphical questions because that's a part of the math curriculum, a very important part of it is being able to write graphs. And so far um, online, well, online assessments for STEM, uh, it's something that's very new on the market. We've, uh, well, in our opinion, and, and it's something that we've just come out with because of the overwhelming demand for it and obviously how important it is. Uh, we think that it's, it's going to be a very important feature coming, uh, moving forward. So to see a brief, uh, a very quick example of how that looks, I'm going to go to our website here. Actually, I saw that I have an easier path just by going here. And how that will look is you actually provide the student with uh, well, to them, it's like providing them like with a graphing paper where they can draw graphs. So very simply, uh, I think my internet is a little bit slow, so it's taking a while to load. That's no issue. This is a question where the teacher asks, uh, please plot the line that is perpendicular to y equals two x minus four and passes through the point 10, four. Okay, so I'm the student. Uh, th the answer is already here. I'm going to delete that. I'm a student and I have, and the teacher, in this case, they also decided to leave this line here because it's part of the data of the question. Um, and so I'm a student, I simply go here, I draw the point 10, four, it's very simple. It snaps to the grid because obviously I'm not expected to be perfectly accurate with my finger. Uh, and then I want to have a line that's perpendicular to two X minus four. So I'm gonna go two and one. And that should do it. I can also kind of see visually that it's perpendicular. And now if I evaluate the answer, it says, well, it was already evaluated to the right answer. So it's, it's not going to update the, <laughs> the feedback, but let me, in that case, for instance, draw something incorrect. 
Uh, it, it only there's a number of settings for wireless quizzes, so I can say as long as the correct answer is there, uh, don't worry about any, everything else. Uh, or I can also say no, only accept answers where the only thing that is represented is the correct answer. So now if I actually get rid of anything, yeah. So the answer is incorrect, but now I can go back because we want to allow the student to, you know, to make any auxiliary drawings or, or representations that they need to answer the question. We don't necessarily care that those are there as long as the correct answer is there too. Um, so now I test that again and the, and the answer is correct, of course. And this is just a very simple example of, of how the graphical rep, uh, answer works. But the important thing is, is that we have, uh, and there's you know, a bunch of features that is not the goal of, the, of this webinar to go, to, go into in detail, but uh, the important thing is that you, know, you provide the student with a graphing paper, just as they would on a, you know, on a physical exam where they have to draw a graph and you provide them with a very simple visual tool to be able to draw graphs. And then those answers are evaluated automatically. Uh, you know, there's a, another very important thing is that we do allow for inaccuracies because, you know, after all, it is a tool that you have to manage with a mouse or a, or a pad or whatever. And it may not, we don't want to evaluate the students on how accurately they can use a, a graphing tool, rather whether they know the solution or not mathematically. And so, so you can also allow for tolerances, say, well, accept any line that's within a certain range and parallel to this line. So we can do things like that, especially because if I go here, uh, we have the same way that we have handwriting for, um, well, let me delete this line real quick. The same way that we have handwriting for math expressions that get recognized, uh, we can also handwrite lines and have those be recognized. So if I, you know, if I do this and I've obviously not passed through point 10.4 at all, maybe this is a little bit too far away, but we do want to allow the students to have a tiny degree of inaccuracy when it comes to drawing lines. And that, in that case, it does snap to it a little bit, but you know, I may have made a mistake. I would want to be tolerant when, when doing that. So the, the graphing tool does allow for, uh, for all that to happen, which is natural. It just allows the students to uh, in a very natural way, answer the question graphically and not have to worry about uh, how accurate it is, basically. Uh, so yeah, so that's the, in summary, the features that we have seen. Um, and we can, well, we have integrations. We're, we're talking about Canvas, obviously, right now, but in any LMS that you use, you will be able to, to have wireless quizzes, Moodle, Blackboard, D2L. Uh, with Brightspace by D2L, just to name a few. Uh, and you can discover all of those at our website, virus.com. And so now, uh, the promised part that at the beginning, we have a special offer for anyone attending this webinar. And we'll get to the questions right after this, but I don't want anyone to miss this. Uh, just email us uh, at info at virus.com uh, with Whoever, whoever your IT or LMS administrator is, uh, with them in CC, uh, so we can provide the information on, on how to get set up. Uh, Sorry, technical difficulties with the laptop that I was using. Can you hear me all right? Okay, yeah, you can hear me. Okay, great. So let us get to all of these questions, which we have very many of. Uh, just one second. Okay. So it just uh, in order of, of how they came, we have David Faulkner asking, what about English units? Uh, for the moment, we, we only implement uh, SI units because, well, we had to decide on when it came to implementing units, okay, which units do we implement? We, we had to decide on uh, which units to, 
to just to implement. And so the the set of units that we saw that made sense at the time was to was obviously the international system of units. Uh, if we had to decide on one list, then that was a good one to decide on. And so the for now only uh, international system. However, if it is a specific requirement, of course you can always come to us uh, and telling us what what the what the uh, particular units that you want are, and maybe we can find a way to implement those. Uh, so uh, anything that that is not a uh, feature yet in wireless quizzes uh, that you would like to see, uh, especially if if that would be you know something that you require in order to justify uh, using the whole system, uh, obviously, please feel free to, to notify us. And we'll, of course, always be happy to look into it. So in the case of units, uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm not the one that makes that decision, but, uh, but we, it's, not, it's not, never going to be an issue to be able to, to implement new features. Uh, and we're glad to hear of the interest for different features. So, uh, well, I hope that answers the question. Uh, I don't know if, if David Faulkner, you're still here. Can you? Um, I guess nothing from him yet. Hopefully I did answer a question. Then Karen Cliff asks, uh, is there more to the math menu than what is shown on this example quiz? Can students enter definite integrals with integrals with bounds? and the system grades whether the bounds and the integrand are correct? That's a very good question. Um, right now, we have not allowed, so I guess, you know, to answer specifically, uh, is there more to the math menu? Uh, right now, no. We will offer in the future the possibility to, to customize the menu, and that may come with some more options. Specifically, when it comes to integrals, uh, definite integrals. Obviously, we've had the question in the past of uh, whether, uh, you know, we've had the feature request for being able to write the indefinite integral sign. Uh, for a lot of, for mathematical reasons, it's not something that, you know, that we can implement in a system that can automatically detect when two uh, equations are, are the same. Uh, if you introduce the indefinite integral sign, then that just brings in uh, a lot of, well, b basically unsolvable mathematical problems. And, and so that's not possible. However, with definite integrals, uh, it's not something that's implemented right now, but it's, uh, it doesn't seem out of the scope of what can be done and what can definitely be done uh, uh, very easily is at, at the very least have sort of a, an integral, a integral with bounds as, a place with you know with the bounds as placeholders and the students answers in those uh, and then you can evaluate those individually because in the end the integral is just a symbol that's there and you what you want to evaluate is the expression inside and the bounds and so what can be done is just have those as placeholders uh, in the expression of of a, of a definite integral so uh, if you want if you know I'm trying to answer these quickly so maybe that didn't make a lot of sense please do feel free to, to write to us and we'll be happy to provide an answer in more detail. But the answer is uh, that something can be done to write that type of question that you, that you uh, are saying here. Uh, can you graph trig functions, polynomials, et cetera? Yes. <laughs> yes, we can. Uh, I didn't show it in the graphing tool, but you can actually enter the expression uh, of, a, of a function and actually have that be graphed instantly uh, on the graphing paper that the student has. So any function, not just uh, trig or polynomial, but uh, any mathematical expression. Well, um, that can be defined with elementary expressions anyways. Um, and then a similar question, can the graphing feature do more than lines, uh, conics, trig functions? Can you edit points so that a graph, so that you can graph a point like two thirds, four ninths or decimal, et cetera. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. The, the graphing feature can do all of those things that you mentioned here uh, and more. So it's, yeah, I, I have shown uh, the simple example, obviously, of lines and points, but conics is something that is are implemented as well, as well as trig functions that I've just mentioned, and also 
defining points with coordinates. That's something that you can do. Uh, is the graphing feature working now or is it coming soon, comma, or question mark? Uh, it is implemented now. It's just not in the latest release of wireless quizzes, but the, the, the new release of wireless quizzes is coming. Well, I don't have the people right here that can answer that question definitively, uh, but it is coming uh, very, very soon before the end of the year. Um, I mean, what you saw here was a public demo of the question actually working. So you can, you know, you can see that it's it's already working on the public demo. Uh, okay, so David confirms that we have answered his original question. Uh, that's the end of the questions that we have written so far. I think we have another question. Oh, is it possible to use random equations with a graph? Yes, yes, it is possible. Uh, since I, well, I don't have it open because I switched computers, but uh, yes, it is very much possible to create a question where, as we've seen in one question, the random things were fractions. In another one, the random things were uh, a whole algebraic expression. The part that you decide to be random can also be an entire graph. So. Uh, you can, you know, define a number of different expressions and select from those randomly and have those be represented graphically uh, in the, when the student opens the question. So yes, you can randomize graphs as well. Where can I find all of the features that I've just shown? in Canvas. Uh, I will write a link in the chat right now. And for anyone who has opted in to, uh, to receive the info, we'll obviously be sending that info as well. Uh, let me go to the chat. So the, oh, hang on just one second. Yeah, that would be, so first of all, obviously uh, wires.com is our main website. So I'll write that here. And then the demo, the public demo for Canvas where I've just shown this example is wires.instructure.com uh, just like any Canvas URL. And of course, you're going to need credentials for that, which are, they're available. You know, you can find them on wires.com. Uh, I'll provide them for convenience right here as well. Those would be instructor at wires.com. And the password, this is all public information. So it's um, available for anyone to use. The password is wires math. So I've written those in the chat. Uh, for anyone that wants to grab them right now, uh, we will also be providing those uh, after the presentation, so it's so that you'll all be able to to go in and, and try things for yourselves. Uh, let me see if we have any more. Do I have any more? Yeah, we have one. Regarding the feedback, is that predetermined? If if so, can we edit or can we make our our own feedback statement? Okay, regarding the feedback is, uh, yeah, the feedback to a question, the question is whether that's uh, predetermined or or if you can create your own feedback or, or what the scope or limitations of that are. Uh, there is a predetermined feedback, but it's not always. So you can make your own feedback uh, with any question that you write in wires quizzes. And that feedback, uh, can be can be provided can be done you know tailored to the different levels of how they've met the criteria for the question. So if they've answered it totally correctly and they've done all the criteria that you've asked for, such as being simplified uh, and so on, then then you can provide one feedback. If they've answered it correctly but they haven't met all of the criteria, then you can provide a different type of feedback. Uh, and one thing that you can also do is grab the student's answer. And so you, you say, 
this is what your answer is. Uh, you know, because obviously they're not just going to be mathematical questions where it's like solve this equation or uh, calculate blah blah blah. We we create scenarios where you know they have to think of a way to resolve something mathematically. So we have a situation, uh, maybe a physical situation with uh, you know pendulums or watermelons or or whatever be it, and and then we have to to ask them to solve to that problem in a mathematical way. And so what you can do, for example, is say, well, this is your answer, and you can grab what the student uh, has answered and, and say, this is what would happen in this situation that the, well, this problem that the, that the question asks uh, if your answer was correct and show why their answer doesn't end up working with, uh, to resolve the problem that you asked for. So you can do, it's very flexible, the level of feedback that you can give to the student, definitely. Mm-hmm. The open graphics will be undefined in many languages. Or... Sorry, can you say that again? The graphical answer and the random questions are unlimited or unlimited? Uh, I'm not hearing you properly, just once. The open question, the graphical answer will be with the random parameters, will be unlimited or limited? Are the graphical answers with the random parameters unlimited uh, or limited? I, I is that a question? I don't know if uh, if you mean unlimited in the sense of like how often you can use it when you're writing the question or or when you have a license for for a quiz. If it's limited in some way to a number of questions, the answer is no. It's it's totally unlimited. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly what you meant, uh, but if anyone does have the question of whether there's a limitation on the number of, of random questions or, or anything that you can do, uh, the answer is, well, you know, once you have purchased the wires quizzes license, the usage that you can get is unlimited. Will it require the student use graphic tablet? Will it, sorry? Will that require students to use uh, graphic tablet? Uh, no, no. The, the question is, does uh, the graphing feature require students to use a graphing tablet or a graphic tablet or something? Uh, no. It, it, the graphing tool can be used with any device, uh, basically any device that has access to a web browser, basically. Uh, there's no problem with that. Uh, we have one more. Oh, no, I think that's... So we have some uh, of our participants, luckily, are already experienced in using wireless quizzes. And so Jorge has kindly answered the, the question on how to randomize graphs. That's, that's one example of, of how to randomize it in the chat. Can the graph uh, be trig functions? Can you graph trig functions? Uh, we, we got to that one. Yeah. Uh, can you tell about the pricing for Canvas integration? Yeah, yeah. Can can I talk about the pricing for the Canvas integration? The pricing, well, the pricing for all academic institutions uh, is the same. Uh, so it's obviously you know with as with any software license, the more you purchase, the the higher the discount on bulk there is. Uh, so it starts at. Uh, three dollars per user per per student, sorry, per year. Uh, but obviously, it, it that is rapidly discounted uh, it, when you start purchasing in bulk. So at a thousand students, uh, I believe it's already down to two dollars and, and something, two dollars forty, maybe two dollars. I, I don't remember the exact amount, but the it starts at three dollars uh, per student. With, with a very low amount of students, and the more students uh, that you have, the, the higher the discount is on, on bulk, obviously. Can I explain the, yes, the, the discount. Uh, so yeah, since we're talking about uh, the pricing right now, may as well uh, mention again that you should not miss out on the 20% discount that we're offering 
uh, for anyone who has attended this webinar uh, and wants to start using the tools now. Uh, just write to us before the end of the year uh, with your IT or LMS administrator uh, in CC. Of course, if you are an IT administrator, just write to us yourself. Uh, if you write to us before the end of December, then we'll provide a 20% discount on uh, your purchase of wireless quizzes. I think we, we're coming up on the hour. So if we've answered all the questions, uh, then we're just checking the, the questions again. Okay, I I see. Yeah, we 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 have actually quite a a, a a number of questions that we have not gotten to yet. We're happy to if if you know if you have more questions to continue for I don't know five, five or ten minutes more. Uh, if anyone wants to stick around and if their question has not been answered. Uh, we'll be happy to answer that now. Um, of course, for anyone who who's <laughs> had enough, uh, thank you so much for attending, and and we'll uh, send you the information that we mentioned afterwards. Of course, uh, and of course, feel free to reach out to us yourselves if you ha want anything else specifically addressed. Uh, we will be sending out a recording of the webinar. Uh, to anyone who, who requests it. And, and yeah, so thank you so much. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll stick around for just a little bit more in case anyone has a question that they have not answered. So I, the chat, I, at this point, it's going to be difficult to scroll up all the way. So if anyone has a question that they answered, that they asked maybe near the beginning uh, that we didn't get to, feel free to ask it again now and we'll be able to see it. Uh, we have one question that says, can you show a simple example of a statistical question such as a probability of Z greater than 1.23? I can't show an example right now, but I will make a note of that. And I believe we have your email. So I can, I can show you a, a simple example of what a question like that will look like. So let me make a note and if that's fine with you with you we'll send you an example of a question that that involves uh, that type of probability um, checking the chat again mm -hmm. It doesn't look like we're getting any new questions right now. So uh, I think we're going to just cut it off here. Uh, again, for anyone still here, do you remember the discount that, that uh, you can get if you write before uh, December with the uh, IT administrator uh, in CC? Um, and yeah, I think that it's we're good to wrap it up just now. And... And um, thank you all so much for coming. We'll look forward to, to being more in touch in the future. And, and yeah, feel free to reach out for us 